Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on part two, the final part of our thigh warmers today. Get excited guys! It's going to be complete directly after today. My tails are really long and I mentioned this at the end of the tutorial. I might end up chopping them a little bit but I gave you a lot of leeway to put um, the, as much length as you want for your tails. But there you go. How gorgeous are these? Now, if you're joining us new, firstly, welcome. Secondly, the colour combination chosen today for this gorgeous piece was chosen by one of our subscribers during a surprise video. Now, we do surprise videos all the time. They're a bit like giveaways. We don't use the word giveaways. It gets rid of all the nasties. We keep in all our wonderful crafters and you guys can enter these surprises and get a chance to win the yarn. This doesn't always happen. It's a one-off occasion. Uh, usually we do live antics where subscribers get to choose the color combinations of our tutorials and that's a lot of fun. But in this case, it was a surprise. And the lovely Luana chose the pink and green for our, one, of our one of our Halloween projects. And I chose this gorgeous little style of thigh warmer for the actual pattern. I've got to just folded it like that because you won't be able to see it otherwise. I'm making a mess of it and creasing it and everything, but you know, there you go. All right, so I'm not gonna talk too much because the tutorial, once again, goes for a long time, but you will need quite a few things for this tutorial, guys. You will need, believe it or not, you'll need quite a few different things oh my gosh there's there's heaps of different things <laughs> you're thinking what well look it's it it looks a lot but it actually isn't you will need obviously the yarn the rest of your yarn that we need to make our project with you will need your scissors to obviously cut the tails and you will need a normal sewing needle i'm trying to find it here guys just your normal sewing needle to weave in the ends and then you will need this really big guy right here. Now, if you don't have this, you can always use a hook. So don't stress too much about it. That is just to try and get these little um, tails in between our little spaces there. All right. If you don't have a big guy like this, don't worry about him. It's a really big sewing, darning, weaving needle. Now, if you don't have that, again, you can use the hook. But you will need a 3.5 millimeter hook or... You can use any one of your other hooks for it. Uh, you'll definitely need the hook that you're using to create your piece. And you will need a larger hook so that you can make these straps that you see right here. So I use a 3.5, a 4 and a 5 millimeter today. You will need two, three stitch markers. You will need at least three, one stitch marker for each end. I don't know, I can't remember now. It's been so long since I've been putting this tutorial together, I've forgotten. But you will need quite a few stitch markers anyways. And of course you will need your yarn and you will need your time. Guys, it does take a little bit of time to make this. Not a lot, you did most of it in the previous, or part one as I should say, which is creating the actual um, whole thigh piece itself. And all you're doing today is joining the piece, making the end, making the top, and then making the tails. Top end and tails. There you go. <laughs> and that's it, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm going to let you get started creating part two, the final part of your thigh warmers. Good luck all. Alrighty, guys. This is what you should have now. And you should have one row of your pink, the final pink, complete. Now, what I want you to do before you do anything else, firstly, this was what you needed to do, yeah? But what I want you to do is, for starters, don't worry about that measurement now, okay? Grab your piece, all right? And if you are making this for you, this is what I want you to do. Let's assume that that's your knee right there. And a little bit further up, very minimal, I don't know, two fingers worth from the knee, right here is where you want your um, <laughs> thigh warmer. I was trying to pick it up, sorry, give me a second. Your thigh warmer to meet. But not, I don't want you to have it meeting like that because once we add our next row and join it, that's going to be really, really loose. So really it has to be tight. You need to have like a little bit of space between it maybe that much like a finger's worth you know of space between it because when we slip stitch to join well actually it's a join as you go slip stitch 
um, we're doing another row of the uh, double crochet chain one yeah or treble chain one you can um, that will loosen up the, your work a little bit but if your work and you've got it real tight around you and it's there then you need to do another four rows like another I should say three rows one row pink two rows green oh no another four rows and one row pink and then meet us back here so really you need to get to this set here to join the last row of pink to the green all right now if you've ended up where you've got your two greens together and you don't want to change it because you think that's perfect by all means you can leave your greens together it doesn't matter now if you use one color you wouldn't have a problem just do an extra row if it's really really tight like that and you've you've stretched your work all the way across and it's still got that big gap in between you need to do another row or so but for the rest of us you should have pulled your work real tight and it will meet there all right so I hope that makes sense guys all right in the meantime what I want you to do is grab a stitch marker now if you played your cards right that would have been that very first row of double crochet we would have had our chains here chained across we would have turned and that would have been our very first double crochet row yes what I want you to do is just on this side anywhere you want place a stitch marker that's just to show me that that is to show you that is that that's the right side of your thigh warmers all right so it doesn't matter for anything it's just to show you that's the right side all right in the meantime what I want you to do is we're going to grab our let's get all the other ends and things out the way we're going to grab our final row and we're going to do it very different all right it's a join as you go now if you struggle with this row complete the row and then just sew your pieces together cut the pink leave a really long tail of the pink sew them together it just means you have to add the pink later to do the border rows all right but this way is the easiest way all right so what you're going not easiest way it seems to be the easiest way so you don't have to cut more threads yeah all right so like normal you're going to turn your work like normal yep like that and you are going to do your standing double crochet let's get a nice close-up your normal standing double crochet in the same stitch you are in like you've been doing all along nothing new there but you're not going to place a stitch marker at all that's your standing double crochet it's done what you're going to do is bring up your green now that very little chain with our knot you're going to pop your slip stitch in there all right so you're going to pop your hook right in that space pull a loop through like so and pull it through to the loop on your hook for this part here I want you to chain one normally you wouldn't chain one here okay but because it's the first stitch you need to chain one there all right so yarn over your hook you're going to skip that first double crochet and jump into your next double crochet or treble okay so yarn over your hook and do your normal stitch as though you were doing a normal pink row all right and this is where I want you to start chaining chain one all right I don't want you to chain one after anymore just the beginning all right so from here you've done your one um, double crochet US treble UK you need to be able to replace this side right here with your one double crochet or treble UK all right so all you're going to do is skip that first stitch jump straight into the second stitch and give it a tug if you can't find it and you can also move your double crochets that might help you or your trebles and pop your hook in the stitch pull a loop through pull it through to the loop you are in yarn over your hook you're going to skip your next let's have a look your next pink there and jump into your next right there with your double or your treble UK chain one and here you're going to skip the next stitch which is that one there and jump right into the next one there with a slip stitch two loops on top pull them through like so pull it through there 
and away you go. That's it. Yarn over your hook, skip the first double crochet, double into your next one. Or treble, UK. Chain one. Again, you're going to skip that next stitch and go into the next one. I'm going to explain it to you so it's a little easier to find. And that one I've gone through only one loop. You want to go through both the loops of that stitch. Is it both loops? There it is, both loops, right there. Being careful, we want both loops, yeah? And we're not going to chain one, we're just going to double crochet into the very next pink by skipping the first pink and going into your next. Now I'm going to show you a quick and easy way so you don't get lost, all right? So what you do is you open up your piece here. It's a bit tricky for a minute. You open up your piece and you have a look. You've done one, two, three, four pinks that are attached. One is loose, don't worry about that. Four are attached. Go to the opposite side and go one, two, three, and four. So you have attached your pink right opposite there. It kind of looks a tiny, tiny little bit off, but it's not completely off. If it was like that and your fourth was right opposite the third, then it's wrong. If your fourth is opposite the fifth, then it's wrong. But it shouldn't be as long as you make sure you skip the right amount of stitches in between. I'll show you a little bit more because it can be a little tricky. All right. We did our last double crochet and we've chained one or treble UK, chain one afterwards. Go to the opposite side. And if you've forgotten, see where your last pink one is. Skip that green. Pop your hook into your next green. So it's always a skip one. Pull the loop through. Pull it through to the loop you are in, yarn over your hook, skip one double crochet into the next. Complete your stitch, chain your one, go to the opposite side once again. You find the stitch you are in, you're skipping the next one and you're going into that very, so skip one, going into the very next one with your two loops on top. Pull the loop through, pull it through the loop on your hook yarn over and do it all again all right can be a little tricky take your time there is no rush we're not in a race <laughs> we're not in a race all right so that's the stitch you're in skip jump straight into the very next one two loops on top pull the loop through pull it through to the loop you are in I'm going to do the one last double crochet and I think you can head off on your own and do this all right and I'll tell you exactly where you will land. When you go right across, oh, by the way, if you want to have a look to see how nice it looks, you see the difference? That looks like one of these joints. It doesn't look much different at all. It looks like a joint. I love this joint. All right, so what you want to do is grab your, just grab a stitch marker. You won't need one down there anymore. You won't need it, no. Okay, but grab your stitch marker and I reckon just place it uh, one, two, and three. Right there. Yeah? And your very last double crochet that you do here, chain one, do the double crochet chain one, leave it there and wait for me there and we will do the rest together. I think for you now, complete this all the way across. Meet me at that stitch marker right there. Don't do that last stitch there. And I'll meet you there and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Alrighty guys, so here we are at the end of the row. Now, if by any chance yours didn't measure up as close as it's supposed to, then you may have gone wrong somewhere in your stitch. But where I asked you to get to was, and I'll explain it to you, I said, get ready to do your stitch on that side. We're not even in frame. Let's try that again. Get ready to do your stitch on that side, but don't do it. So where you should be right now on this side, you should have, this is what you should have. You're in that stitch. You need to go skip one, go into there, and then you'll be skipping one, you're going to the next. And I'll explain that in a minute. All right. So you've done your stitch, you've done your chain. Now what you need to do is skip one here and jump. Let me take that stitch mark. It's only going to confuse us. All right, so you are in there. 
you skip one and you go right into the very next one. And I'm pulling real tight. My stitches are a little tight here. I have a feeling yours might be too, so just be weary. And then you're just slip stitching like you've been doing all along. It's just a little tricky here. You're going to go into the stitch with your stitch marker now. So yarn over your hook, hop into the stitch with your stitch marker. Now, if you're carrying up your green, stop right there. Don't carry up. Just leave it where it is. We don't need to carry the green up anymore. You can just leave it there. So all you're doing is pulling your pink through like normal. And you've got your three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through your last two like normal. And now you're going to chain your one and then you're going to slip stitch into the top of that green if you can find it. It's the very last chain right next to the stitch. So as best you can, pop your hook in, pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. And what you've done is you've closed it up here. Now, it kind of looks a little weird here. Don't worry about it. We're going to fix that in a minute. Before you do anything, grab a stitch marker and pop it in that loop right there. And just tighten it up. And you'll see that it looks like it's kind of a little bit, it's sort of a little bit higher than that. That's a tiny little bit higher is normal, right? Not too much higher where that green is sitting right up there and your pink is all the way down here. Yeah, no. All right, the reason I ask you to put your stitch marker is this is what I want you to do. Two things we're going to do here. We're going to be changing our hook size to a smaller hook, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But this is the inside out of our work. Remember where our stitch marker is? It's probably on the inside now, the blue one that I showed you before. Now, this is where your tail is. Yeah, pop your hand in the tail. Yeah, pull it through the right side. You are now working on the right side of your work, yeah? Go back to that pink stitch, pull up the tail, like that. Grabbing your next size hook. Now, all along I've been working on the four, yeah? I'm dropping down half a hook size to a 3.5, all right? So now what you're going to do is just give your pink a tug. You're not going to change your stitch, your thread or anything. You've just given your pink a tug. You are going to chain one. Let's move everything out the way so you can see. In the same stitch that we are in, we're going to do a single crochet US, double crochet UK. And that's popping your hook right in that same space, pulling a loop through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both those loops on your hook, grab your stitch marker and pop it in the top two loops of that stitch there. And we're going to need that at the end of the round. Okay, so now you're going to go into the second stitch, which is right there. It's a bit tricky. And do your second one. So this row here has two single crochets, US two doubles in the UK. And this row here is going to have two. But what you're going to do is pop it in that stitch right there, one. And your second one, you're going to pop in that little looped area. See that little loop there? Just popping your hook in that loop and doing your second one. So what you are initially doing is putting two single crochets, US or two doubles UK, in each row. All right, except for, and I'll get to that in a minute. Oh no, we need the pink. We're going to crochet over that pink tail. We're going to crochet over it just for the first two stitches. All right, so in the first one, let's have a look first. Uh, there it is, one, and a second one. So that, one, that row there of the pink is done. Just pop your tail at the back. Now, in this pink row spaced only, the row with all the spaces in the pink only, you're going to do your single crochet two together US, double crochet two together UK. And that is popping your hook in the stitch, pull a loop through, 
jump into that little loop see that loop right there that's where we want you to pop your stitch like so three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops you've closed this row right here together all right now you're just going in the next two green rows with two in each all right so one oops oh, here we go again one in your first stitch right there get close and show you where I'm going and one into your second stitch of the green and then into the green space you go into the first one and into the second one where the loop is right there yeah I'm only make putting it in that loop to make it easier for you what you should really be doing is getting really into that tight area but I'm just going to leave it in the loop to make it easier. And plus it doesn't look too bad either and covers the carry up yarn. So one into your next pink. And the same row, second pink. Now, when you come to the space pink, what are we going to do? Two together. All right, so pop your hook in, pull a loop through, hold it there, jump into that looped area, pull a loop through, Three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. So let me explain so you know what you're doing. In the first row, you're doing two singles, one there and one there, or two doubles UK. In the next row, you're doing the same and the same. But in the fourth row, you are doing two together. Always remember that in the every pink row that has the space, you're doing two together. Every other row has two in each. Um, section all right I hope that makes sense or two in each row and we'll do one more section again all right so this is the repeat pattern for the row okay so one in your first green and one in the same first green but the next stitch and then one in your second green first stitch second green second stitch Oh, did you see that? I just split the yarn. I got so whipped up too, didn't I? Oh, I nearly had heart failure. There we go. All right. One in the pink. And the second one of that pink. And then you get to your space. And it's two together. One in the first. And jump into the second. And then you pull through. All right, so that is pretty much all it is. You can actually continue to do this from the green all the way to the very last pink section of your piece. But what I want you to do is not do your two together here. When you get to the last pink rose itself, just stop at the green right there. But before you go and do it all on your own, check it out. You cannot see the carry up of the yarn. All right, remember how I kept saying you won't be able to see it, won't be able to see it in part one? Well, here we are in part two and you can't see the carry up. How cool is that carry up? No ends to weave in, just the one or two at the end and that's it. How exciting. All right, so your job now is to continue in the round, get right to the very last set of greens and I will meet you back here once you're done. Alrighty guys, I asked you to get to the end of this row and I've got my little green tail over there. Let's move it out the way. And I said don't do your last pink. I actually didn't do the last two pinks. So let's do my first row of the pink, which is one and two. Alright, now the second row of the pink you need to do your two together. It's the final row. We're still doing our two together. All right, so you're going to pop your hook in that first stitch, pull the loop through like normal, and you're jumping into the stitch with the loop right there. Yeah, pull it through like normal. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Sorry, guys, it's a little awkward now. It's falling off the table. Um, normally we would slip stitch into this stitch marker stitch but we're not going to do this we're going to pop a single crochet directly in it so pop your hook in you might want to take the stitch marker out for now so you're popping your hook in that single crochet us uh, double uk 
pull the loop through like so. Did I split the yarn? It looks like it's been split. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'll tell you why I'm splitting the yarn in a minute. I'll explain it to you once I'm ready. <laughs> Let's just wind it back up there. So pull the loop through like normal. Yeah. Close it up nice and tight and then you just pull your loop through like normal. And pop your stitch marker back in that stitch right there. Now make sure that stitch is not too loose or it's going to look like you have a, a gap there. All right. So in the meantime, this is a super easy row. You are doing a single crochet directly into the very next stitch. So you're in that stitch there. You're going into your very next stitch. Whoops. Right there with a single crochet. Now the reason my yarn is splitting is because I'm using a smaller hook for starters and secondly I've been playing with this yarn. <laughs> if it splits just give your work a little bit of a twist. It's just a quick tip. Don't twist it too much or you unravel the future yarn there yeah, that's going to come out. And single in every stitch across. This is a super easy row round. <laughs> It's not a row, it's a round, Mary. So single in every stitch. If you can't see like I'm doing, I'm just pushing it forward and seeing exactly where my stitch is and we want to go right into the very next stitch. Now, when you're getting to those join two together areas, you're not doing anything different. You're just finding a stitch and you're doing your single crochet. Finding the next stitch, single crochet. That's it. That is all you are doing in this round. Get excited, guys. I'm not going to sit here and show you the single crochet US's, um, double crochet UK's. Do them all the way in the round. Get to the stitch before your stitch marker, and I will meet you back here once you're done. All right, so here we go again. Right at the very end, and what I told you to do is get towards the end or the second last stitch or something like that. There is a stitch right before the stitch marker, and you're going to pop your hook in and do the single crochet right there. And what are you going to do here? You are going to repeat the last round. All right, so you're popping your hook in the stitch with your stitch marker and doing a single crochet. Take out that stitch marker and replace it into the new stitch of your single crochet. All right, keep the stitch marker in because this is just showing us the back of our um, thigh warmer. All right, so keep your stitch marker there. You'll need that for later. And if you've removed it, just pop it in a similar area. Yeah, and guess what? That's it. That's all you're going to do. Hop into the next stitch with a single crochet. And a single and a single all the way around your piece so guess what you're going to do now super easy guys you are going to repeat the last row that we just did for the next four more rows and then meet me back here and we'll talk about what we're going to do next all right so just repeat that last row we did four more times and I'll meet you back here once you're done Alrighty guys, so here we are at the end of our fourth round. Alright, so what you have is that. Let me show you exactly what you have. How gorgeous is the stitch? It's come up real nice. It's tightened up our piece down below, which is what we want. And I am on, let's have a look here. I am on my last stitch right there. But I'm going to start the stitch and not finish it. I'm just going to pull the loop through like so. Nice long tail. Now, as long as you're happy with this length, I wouldn't change it. This length is the same for everybody because I've given you more length on your leg. Cut your piece. Pull this loop through. Grab your sewing needle. And this is what I want you to do. Normally, you would have slip stitched or you would have done your single crochet in that stitch with your stitch marker. So what you're going to do is pop your needle in the back loop of that stitch with your stitch marker in it. Pop it down like so. Take out your stitch marker. You don't need it there anymore. As long as you know where you're in. Otherwise everything's going to blur if I don't move it out the way. 
<laughs> all right from here you're going to go right back into the stitch that you started from there no where are we no we're not going back in there we're going in the stitch opposite right next to it all right so this is the loop that we've pulled through yeah and that is the stitch right there that we've half completed I want you to go I'm trying to do this so you can see in the back loop of that half stitch right there can you see that did I split the yarn let's have a look I don't know but I've got a piece of hair on my hand <laughs> let's move that out of the way I've split the yarn all right so let's try it again in that back loop this is probably not the right needle to do this because it's splitting the yarn there we go we're in so you go right into the back loop and you pull that loop through like so and it'll tighten up a little bit like that it's not enough yeah so what I'm going to do is come back through but not in the same stitch that we are in there because I'm finding that's gapping a little I'm going to come back in through to the stitch just after it like that yeah and then back into the stitch that we first started with but the full stitch this time and that kind of closed everything up and I'm not too worried if it looks a tiny tiny little bit bubbly I'm trying to use the modern technique personally between you and I guys I don't like the modern technique I would have done a normal slip stitch and then knot it but anyway everybody's asking me for this modern technique so I'm doing it and at the back I want you to just slip stitch into a few stitches to tighten it up on the way back coming down the slip stitches at the back these are in the back of the stitches yeah it's just to tighten up the loops. It's not to do anything fancy yet. It's just to tighten everything up, all right? And then you are going to just weave your little thread through, making sure you can't see the needle from the front, yeah? And weave it back into some stitches, as far back as you can go. Don't pull too tight, because everything's going to pull. And then you're going to go back into the other direction as well weaving in as many stitches as you can making sure you can't see the needle from the front why are we weaving in oh guys this is finished the base is finished yeah um you can cut there if you want or if you want to be a little pedantic like somebody else you know and just pull it through one last time that might be too much it's making it very thick all right just pull it through one last time all right and once you're done weaving that end in Pull it out like so and just straighten everything up and your tail is gone. We're going to turn this inside out for a minute so that you can weave in these ends. And I'm not going to weave the pink end in with you because once I do the green one, the pink is easy. So the idea with the green one is to cover it up. You don't want the green showing through the front. Now, this is the back of your work, so it's not, not too much of a problem. I'm so glad we're weaving this green one in. It's been annoying me the whole time. <laughs> it really has. All right, so there's the tail that we started crocheting over. The deal is to skip that first stitch or split it, which is what I'm going to do, and then go right back in, weaving through some thicknesses like so. But before you pull it through... Make sure you can't see the needle from the front. And if you can't see the needle, it means everything is great. Just pop it through. Mm -hmm. Try not to have my big fingers in your way. <laughs> and pull it through like so. All right. So make sure you've pulled it through properly. Yeah. And if you like, go a little bit further. Notice how I see I've split some of the yarn there. Yeah. That's what you want to do occasionally when you're weaving in not for normal crocheting and normal sewing but for weaving in of your ends it's okay to split it's an absolute no-no in crochet <laughs> let me tell you people tell me off all the time don't split the yarn what are you splitting the yarn for da, 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 da. and they're nagging me the whole time nag 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 <laughs> whinge 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 all right so now we're gonna <laughs> we're going to go back in the same direction but we're going to skip one stitch going over or even half a stitch notice how I'm splitting it as well and don't tell anyone because we don't want anyone to know Mary splits 
or they'll start telling me off again. <laughs> they tell me off, they do. I start crying and everything. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a naughty girl. All right, so that's it. You don't need to go over it too much. We've weaved it in. We've crocheted over it once and we've weaved it in twice. I think that is plenty. I'm going to let you do the pink, this pink one here on your own because now that you know how to do the green, you're doing the pink exactly the same. But guess what you're going to do here is fiddly, isn't it? We're going to put it in the right way yet again. Now, how do you know where the right way is? Your stitch marker should still be there. Now, if you've taken that blue stitch marker out, naughty, naughty. <laughs> Listen to me. Naughty, naughty. She's telling them off now. All right. So oh, it's all creased and yucky because I've been playing with it. But that's the base already done. Let's start the top. Get excited, guys. We are this close to finishing. Notice the fingers. This close. <laughs> Grabbing your pink once again. <laughs> <laughs> in the nick of time too because I'm running out of time all right <laughs> she's running out of time all right so that's the back seam and we know that because we've got the green that we initially started our whole piece off with all right so before you start now here's a little tip go right back to your four millimeter hook stop using the smaller one and go back to the four. We don't want to tighten this. This is the area where our thigh is. We don't want to tighten that, all right? So the idea is to find the start. Normally I would pop the hook in there, but it seems really loose there. So what I'm going to do is start from this double crochet row, all right? So you find the stitch in the double crochet row and just pop your hook in that tight stitch. Grab your pink and pulling it through like so. Passing your little pink forward. I think I've got too much tail. It was really long. Let's pull it up a bit. We don't want that much. We do want some tail for weaving in, but not a lot. We've locked it into place, that thread. So chaining one, and in the same stitch, you are doing a single crochet, US double UK. So do your single crochet, like so. Popping your stitch marker in, like so. And you need to do a single crochet in the second green. Now, this is pretty much the same as the base where you do it in that little looped area, but it's pulling a little bit. We're still going to do it. Pop your hook in. Just grab the tail and pass it at the back. That will tighten it up a little. So you do your single crochet. You don't want it too tight anyway because we need to be able to have this looser because it's up near our thigh, yeah? So then you're going into your space here. But in this section of our work, we're not doing two together. It's just a single crochet in every stitch, all right? So you go into your chain right there with a single crochet into your next, it's not really the chain, it's a standing double crochet, yeah? Into your next one. So you should have two in the green, two in the pink, and two in this pink. Now this one might be a little bit tricky, this row, so just be weary. You've got to find stitches everywhere. And I tend to split this stitch down here, the base. You'll know when you get to it what I mean by split the stitch. I'll get close to you. There's your first one in the green. And your first, your second one in the first row of the green. Yeah. And there's, oh, it's really tight here. It's really tight. Again, if you're struggling, you could actually pop it in the space. I don't really like to do that um, because it's up the top and it'll be noticeable. So there's a stitch. You can do a single crochet there and a single crochet in that base that's what I mean by the base stitch it's got like a two loops thing happening yeah single in your stitch single in your next pink stitch bit tight yeah single try not to do these stitches too tight loosen them up a little bit yeah single in your next stitch single in your pink right there and again, if it's easy for you to find any space you find, as long as you're doing two singles in each row or two doubles if they are um, 
a UK. So you could just do it in there and then one in there. You could do that. Yeah, and then in there, you could do it right in that one right there. See that? There. Yeah. And then one in your two loops there. All right, it's, it's a little awkward for me to sit here and show you the whole row because it's going to be awkward. Yeah, but your job now is to single crochet two in each row. Yes, US, or double crochet two in each row, UK get to the very last set, the pink rows right here, and I'll meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, so here we are at the end of this row. Get excited. We're a few rows away from completing the whole thing. What they're saying, what? All right, so I have completed up to my pinks, okay? I have done the first two greens, yeah now i want to finish my last green so i'm going to pop one into that stitch there and one in the tightest stitch you can find there well it's not too tight actually not too bad at all all right and now i'm going to slip stitch into that one i know we didn't slip stitch before but we're going to do that now all right because it's something totally different here so what we're going to do here is chain one yarn over your hook you're going to put a half double us terminology or a half treble in the uk terminology in the same stitch so in you go pull a loop through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops on your hook grab that stitch marker again pop it through like so and then you're going to chain one and from here, you're going to skip one stitch, go into the next with your half double crochet US, half treble UK. So skip one, go into the next. Two. Chain one. Skip. Into the next. There you go. And so on, all the way across. You're in that stitch there. I almost messed up, but you're in that stitch. You're going to skip the next one and you're going straight into the next one with your half double. And this is pretty much it for the round, yeah? All right, I'm not going to sit here and let you watch me do it. It'll take too long. So you're going to do this on your own. So it's skip one and a half in the next. All right, it's super duper easy and off you go. All right, chain one, skip one half in the next chain one skip one half in the next get to your very last two stitches here and i'll meet you here once you're done and we'll talk about what we're going to do next all righty guys getting excited getting very exciting all right let's bring that up all right so what we've got here i'm right at the very end and I have one single crochet left and I'm kind of caught up in this one here. Now, if you don't have one left at this stage, as long as it's wide enough, I've just taken mine undone. How do you like that? As long as it's wide enough up the top to fit around your thigh, don't stress. This is what I want you to do. So let me finish that last one. Uh, what are we? Skipping one and we're jumping into that next one right there. Chain one. Now, we're not doing the half double US or half treble UK anymore. We are just slip stitching into the stitch with the stitch marker. I don't know if that went in properly. Let's have a look. And there you go. Yep, slip stitch into that stitch there, taking out your stitch marker. And what I want you to do from here is slip stitch into the first space like so. Yeah chain one two and three in that stitch right there you're going to pop a stitch marker right there and in the same space you're going to put three double crochets us three trebles uk so yarn over your hook in the space one two 
and three. And the chain three in this row here will classify as a double crochet. So that's actually now four double crochets. Guess what? That's the pattern across. It's super easy. Skip your half double US, half treble UK, jumping straight into the space with four double crochets US or four trebles UK. One, two, three, and four. All right, that's exactly what you're doing all the way in the round. Skip in there, you put your four. Super easy. Am I going too fast? Sorry, guys. Three. I just realized that I was going very fast. But I think you know what you're doing. It's super easy, this one. This row is only going to give you a bit of a, you know, a bit of a curve or a curl, if you will, straight into your next space with four. All right. I don't think I need to show you this, do I, guys? I think you know what you're doing. That's two. That's three. And that's four. All right, so what you'll start to see is this. It'll start to be wavy. That is the look we're going for up the top. We want it to be wavy up the top. All right, so there you go. Super duper easy, all right? So what I want you to do is continue that. You are doing skipping your half and jumping and putting four doubles US, four trebles UK in the next space. And so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Get to your very last space right there. Do the second last space. Wait for me right there. And we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Alrighty, guys. Here we are at the end of this round. Oh, that's too close. Sorry. I just got, you know, Zoom happy. Sorry, guys. <laughs> she got Zoom happy. All right, so now we're going to put our last four double crochets in the space before the stitch marker area. So pop your four doubles US, uh, four trebles UK in that space. It's made it look real pretty with that, hasn't it? It's just a basic stitch, yeah? We didn't do anything fancy in the area. We just added four of them in one instead of adding two. All right, so now we're going to slip stitch into the stitch with the stitch marker. However, instead of doing that, we're going to pull up our loop real tall. You guessed it. We are going to cut our stitches. I've got yarn everywhere here, guys. We're going to cut our thread, not our stitches. <laughs> we're going to cut our stitches. Oh, no, that's crazy thinking. Um, <laughs> she's crazy. All right, and let's go and pop our little thread in there like so. And there's your um, stitch marker. And what you're going to do is actually pop your needle in the loop of the stitch after the stitch marker, right? The back loop there after the stitch with your stitch marker in it, like that. Taking out your stitch marker first before you do anything else, because it's only going to annoy you. Pull that loop through like so, yeah? And then you're going to come back and find that very first stitch that we started with there. It would help if you separate it like I just did. Pop it through the back loop of, if I can get it down there, that stitch. <laughs> like so. And then we're going straight back into that stitch again, but this time through both the loops, like that. And I don't really, to be fair, I don't really like this way of doing it. I don't think it does it justice, but anyway. And then you can either go back in that stitch or you can go through the back, whichever suits you. It doesn't really matter. If you wanted to leave the knot and do the knot, that would be okay too. All right, so I would use the knot, to be fair, okay. But never mind, it's done now. <laughs> what I want you to do, don't you love it? She's just all over the place. Pop some threads through your loops at the back, like that. So weave it down into your loops at the back. Being careful, is the needle showing? Nope. Pop your sewing needle. I'm sorry, I'm rushing now, guys, because it's at the end and I get excited. So I rush a little bit, which is probably not a good thing. So when you get down here, what are you going to do? You're going to thread in and out of all these stitches that you created right there. 
but you're going to check the front and make sure you can't see the needle yeah you don't want to be able to see that needle otherwise you'll see the thread and just pull it through like so don't pull it too tight because it's all attached to your piece right there all right right there then you're going to go back in the same direction you came from but you're going to skip a stitch or split a stitch, whatever you want to do. Don't tell anyone I'm splitting stitches. They'll yell at me. Oh, people yell at me, guys. They really do. They say, why are you showing people how to split stitches? That's not right. <laughs> it works well with wool. It doesn't work too well with cotton, guys, but it does work well with wool. All right. So there you go. We're done. Guess what? That's done. Oh, my gosh. It's done, guys. It's done it written no it's not you're not finished yet you're thinking what no you're not finished you have two more things to do two big things <laughs> not two big things two small things see these ends here same thing you're going to weave them in i'm going to use the green first then you can do the pink off air and i say that because the pink can be covered under that pink whereas the green can be noticed so i want to show you how to weave that end in without being noticed which is going to be real tricky in fact, the pink I might bring up this way. Oh, I don't know. I'll bring it that way. Okay. It's a bit tricky. Oh, it's very tricky. Okay. We're going to pop it through down there. Can't see it. Good. Pop the needle through. Like so. Now I'm going to go down in. Whoops. Not even in frame. Down in there. Whoops. Not the whole lady. I'm just there. Making sure you can't see the needle. Nope, you can't, which is good. And then I'm going to pass my needle back into some threading at the back of the green. Like that. Check the front. No needle. Perfect. And I've kind of gone around, haven't I? So that there's no way that's coming undone. However, you know me. I'm a stickler. If you don't know me, guys, and you're brand new, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. <laughs> um, I am very, very fussy with my tails. thought I pulled the thread there. No, I didn't. And there's nothing you can do about it. I'm very fussy. That's it. That's all I want to say about that. Yeah, very fussy. All right, so perfect. I think we're done. I've gone through once, and this is like the second time. And I've gone around in like a little circle, if you think about it. All right, that's done. You're going to weave that pink one off air. I'm not going to do that now. But the very, very next special thing you're going to do is grab your contrast colour. You are going to make a strap that goes inside these loops here. It's all way too exciting. All right, so grab your contrast colour and let's get making the strap. All righty, so now what we're going to do Grab yourself a whole new hook again. This time you need a five millimeter hook or a thicker millimeter hook because the straps you want to make look something like that. All right. And we're going to work on two strands at the same time. All right. I was going to do another version of it, but I didn't really like it with this pattern. This is the one I like. All right. So you're going to make this strap here. I've already made one for one leg. We're going to make one for another. But what you will need is two threads. So I wound up a ball, I don't know, the size of my hand, and even that's probably too big for a starters, and got the thread from the actual skein. And then I popped both of them together. All right like so just you know as even as you can doesn't have to be perfect we're going to trim it at the end but I want you to leave a long tail I don't know maybe just spread your fingers out and leave a long tail like that that gives you ample tail to cut later if you decide you want to leave your tails longer or if you want to cut them a bit shorter it gives you plenty to cut later so grab your yarn just wrap it around your finger once twice passing your back loops halfway over, hold it there, pass in the other loops all the way over, grabbing that five millimeter hook and popping it in here. Now, if you don't have a five millimeter hook, try as close as you can, 5.5 or six. So all you're going to do, so simple, is chain one yarn over your hook, pull it through to the loop on your hook once, and again, two, and again, 
three, four, five, and so on and so on. All right. I stopped counting, but get up to 10 for me. <laughs> I know I've stopped counting, but that'll teach me. All right. So you know what? You can count them afterwards. Did you know that? See the little V's you got here? You've got your uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, how about that? Ten. <laughs> Actually did ten. All right. But now your job is to do exactly that for the amount of chains that you see up on the screen there for your size. Now everyone's size is different because of the width of our leg but what I'll get you to do is do what you see there for your measurement or for the measurement that I have then I want you to try it on before you cut it because you might think well no I don't like that size I want mine longer and you might want that extra long where your tails are sitting right down to your ankles. All right so in the meantime that's what I want you to do chain your chains until you reach the size you see up on the screen there and I'll meet you back here in a moment and get ready for finalizing our thigh warmers very exciting I'll catch you in a moment Alrighty, guys so here I am with my 2.5 million chains again these were rough measurements if you wanted to add more take it off whichever and I picked up the wrong hook um, you could do just that do you like that right in the middle of a sentence you could have done just that all right so what I'm going to do I've chained my chains I'm just going to chain one more it's kind of like pulling up a loop really long loop long 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 loop because we are going to cut it to suit us now I've already made one okay so I'm going to use the same measurements as I made my one to cut the tails the same. So what we're going to do, grab the tails of both these ends, yeah, just put them together like that and just cut them at the shortest measurement that you want. If you want them here, if you want them there. Now, like I said, I've already done one, so I'm going to match them with the other size that I've done. So I'm just going to bring it out, find the shortest stem, the shortest thread and cut them on the shortest thread all right so get that out the way like that now we're going to attach them to our piece very simple you don't even need to attach but you've got to put it through anyway so you may as well do it with me here yeah all right so that's the back of my piece let's move everything out the way you don't need it anymore that's the back of my piece Literally the center of my piece, right? Now I'm going to flip my work, yeah? And if, I'm not even going to fuss too much. I'm just going to find the center right here. But before we do, it helps for you to have one of these really big darning weaving needles. If you don't, grab your four millimeter hook. I'm not going to show you where to put it yet. I'm just going to grab one piece of thread through just to show you what to do. And you can just pull it through like that. All right. And then go through with your hook. But I'm going to use the sewing needle. And we're going to find, so what I'm going to do is just thread both those threads into that really big gigantic eye. Like that. You don't have to pull the whole thing through, just where the threads are. And you're going to just do this. If you want to count over, you can. I'm just going to do this, seriously. And I'm thinking of popping it Really, if I was going to pop it somewhere, being the fact that it's green, I'd like to pop it in that pink there, but I still want it to be centre at the back. Now, where is the centre? I don't know. I weave that end in so well, I can't find it. All right, let's just do this. Turn it over. <laughs> There's the centre of my back. All right, so that's roughly the centre right there. That's the centre. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I've moved it around so much. Oh, look, I'm not even in frame. I've moved it around so much. There's my little centerpiece. And if you really want to get pedantic, right, you've got your three pinks here, three sets of pinks, and you've got your three sets of green. That is pretty much the center right there, right? If that's the case, straighten it out nicely. Flip it. Yeah, because this is where you want your tails to be up the top here and I think I would like my tails to be in the center of the green and in the center of the pink if you like you could do in fact it might be better in the center of the pink because your pink is noticeable but 
that is actually where the center of this piece is. If you think about it, that's the center of the piece. So I'm just going to pop my needle in just after the green. Let's give you a close up so you can see what I'm doing. Pop it in after the green and out of the pink. I'll do it one at a time for now just to show you. But later you can pull it through a few at a time, right? So you're out this way, you're going over this one, over this one here, and under that one. Over, under, over, and under. And you could do just that. If that bothers you, then you could do one at a time. It's okay to do one at a time. Like one at a time is like this. So there's your little thread there. You're going over it and under. And that's one. All right. Just being careful when you do this that you don't, this is what I used to do in the past, accidentally pick up some thread at the back and split the, um, it's a bit difficult with this needle because it's nice and thick, but you can accidentally pick up some thread and it may not go through properly. So over, under, over, under, over, under, all the way through like so. And I've got two more. So I go over this one and then under this one and I'm right at the front where I first started. And then I pull it through. And what I want to do here, and now look at that. This tail is really, really short. <laughs> Not even in frame. Let's try it again. Uh, let's try it one more time. There we go. Really, really short. And this one is so long. So we want to straighten things up. We want to pull as much as we can. Hold it there. I've got my hair everywhere and just pull the rest through. Alright, so keep evening it up as you go. There you go. So it's kind of really straight in front. So when you wear it, you're now ready to wear it, by the way, guys. When you wear it, you just tie it in a little knot here. Like that. I don't know how tight it is around your waist, around your waist, around your thigh. Mine will probably be just sitting real tight there. Okay. And you can do bows the way you want. I don't know. This one here looks like a good way to do. It doesn't matter. Any bow you like, don't pull it so big but there you go and there's your bow <laughs> come on come on stand still there are other ways to do bows so look them up on youtube i'm sure there's plenty of tutorials out there that shows you how to do bows i might fix mine up off air later but i don't know how i can fit it all in guys that's about as far as i can get without it showing you my backyard <laughs> now if you want to cut your threads a little more you can i probably will i might cut them down to about there so I was going to wear them today, but I've changed my mind, guys. I want to surprise you when we do our video. Very exciting. Don't forget, guys, if you have tails in here to weave them all in. I've weaved all mine in off air before whilst I was making these little chains. So there you go. We now have, I haven't put the other ones on this one yet. The other one on this one yet, but there it is. There it is. Once again, what you do, this is the one we were working on right here. <laughs> this is the one we were working on. This one, I can tell because it's really tight. It hasn't been stretched properly yet. <laughs> the other one, I've been flicking it around for weeks and weeks and weeks, and it's rather stretched. But this one here, not so much. All right, so you find the center. Let's take this out. And the center is that, remember that seam that we did right there? That's the center. I'm trying to find that center for me. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. Yep, flip your work. And do it yet again. So grab your needle, do it again. You now, guys, have finished your... I'm not going to show you because we've done it already. You have now finished... And I've lost my sewing needle. You have now finished your beautiful thigh warmers. This is not exciting. I am not going to wear it, guys. I'm going to show you on the actual Halloween video itself. I want to surprise you then. Plus, I'm not really sure if I want these tails this long. I might end up cutting them shorter. All right. So thank you very much for watching the final part 
of our beautiful thigh warmers today. I don't know how to put this, so let's do it like this. The final part of our thigh warmers today, guys. Um, and a very special thank you to the lovely Luana for her colour combination of this gorgeous piece that you see right here. The lovely Luana chose these beautiful colours and I thank her very much. They're not exactly Halloween colours, but they will be in our video. We are going to have a lot of fun in that funny video. If you're joining us new and don't know what I do, every year I do a little funny video that everybody gets to laugh at my expense. And <laughs> this year is exactly the same. Going to do a little bit of funny. There's nothing scary. There's nothing silly about it. Oh no, there is something silly. There's nothing scary about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me having a lot of fun and relaxing after doing hours and hours and hours of our uh, Halloween projects. Now, up on the screen, you see right there now, these are some of the other projects that we are creating through Halloween. Get excited, guys. They are coming. Or actually, you won't be able to see the um, shawl yet because that's in the water. <laughs> because I'm about to block that. <laughs> and get it ready for tomorrow um so you won't be able to see the shore but you can see the sweater there and now the leg warmers wait i'm sorry keep saying leg warmers they're thigh warmers get it right mary thank you very much for joining us today uh, don't forget guys we have our lives at 4 p.m wednesday afternoons 10 a.m saturday mornings melbourne australia time my name is mary this is well crochet designs and these are our gorgeous thigh warmers color combination by the lovely luana thank you for watching and ciao for now